Welcome back to the ACES Systems Fundamentals of Vibration series. I'm Robert Berlin with the Product Support Division of ACES Systems. When conducting vibration analysis using any of the ACES Systems analyzers, such as the Cobra 2 and Viper 2, the weakest link in the chain is in the cables and connectors. That's not because these are of poor quality, though. Instead, it's because the cables and connectors have to move tiny electrical signals from the sensor to the analyzer through a noisy electrical environment where cables are subject to a fair amount of abuse. Today, we'll cover the types of cables used to carry signals to the analyzer and the types of connectors you're likely to see. Then, we'll discuss the most common points of failure and provide you with some pointers for how to avoid trouble. There are four types of cables. Twisted pair, coaxial, miniature coaxial, and low noise. The twisted pair cables are usually connected to sensors that require separate voltage, signal, and ground wires. Typically, these kinds of cables are less than an eighth of an inch in diameter, which makes it easier to route them through panels and cowlings. The outer insulated jacket can usually withstand up to 150 degree temperatures, while the Teflon-coated wires on the inside can withstand up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. There's also a copper mesh wrapper to help shield the conductors from external electrical noise. Coaxial cables, like these, are mostly used to connect the piezoelectric sensors, which only require two wires. The center strands of wire conduct DC voltage and signal, while the middle part of the wire acts as a ground and a shield. The outer jacket is made of plastic vinyl and is damaged by heat over 175 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember that when the outer jacket is damaged, the middle part of the cable can easily short or ground to the airframe or engine. While this type of cable is relatively inexpensive compared to the twisted pair type of cable, its larger size does make it harder to handle, especially during colder weather. Like its bigger brother, the miniature coaxial cable has a center core, middle conductor, and an outside plastic vinyl jacket. But unlike its bigger brother, though, this type of cable uses a single strand of wire in the center. It's very expensive and is also very fragile. Only small 1024 thread type accelerometers use this type of cable and are usually only recommended in special aircraft applications. Now, some applications require special high temperature sensors and cables. For these applications, we offer high temperature, low noise cables that have Teflon jacket and a special internal coating that can withstand temperatures above 550 degrees Fahrenheit and reduce internal cable noise pickup. These types of cables are expensive and are usually made to order. So we've covered the cables. Now let's look at the connectors. There are four types of connectors used on ACES systems analyzers. These are the MS3100 series, the MS3106, the miniature coax or microdot type, and the coax BNC connectors. The most durable of these connectors are the mil spec or commonly called the cannon plug connectors. This type of connector is made with gold plated pins either soldered or crimped in place. The miniature coax or microdot connectors are the most fragile of these connectors and are usually made of brass or stainless steel. What we see most often being returned for repair is missing screws, cables separating from the connector, cut cables, melted cables, crushed connectors, and the ground wire disconnected from the connector. There are probably several other ways a cable or connector can be damaged, but let's focus on some things you can do to prevent heartache during a job. Inspect cables and connectors before every job. If something is wrong, we promise it's better to switch cables than trying to complete a job with damaged cables or connectors. During your inspection, pay attention to cuts and nicks in the cable. You may also check the connector's pins to make sure they aren't bent or broken off, and that the wires have not pulled away from the connector clamp. When installing hardware, make sure you route cables around the hot areas. You'll also want to avoid spinning parts, otherwise you'll be telling your coworkers an embarrassing story later. Look out for places where aircraft doors or cowlings compress cables. 
You may shear the wires inside the jacket and may not be able to see the damage until you start trying to collect data. Give the cable a little room to breathe where it connects to the sensor. Not so much slack that the cable can flap around, but enough so that the cable isn't strained at the connector. And finally, be aware of potential signal noise. This can happen when you route your cables directly over avionics or test equipment that generates a signal that can be absorbed into your cable and distort the signal you're trying to capture. Thanks for watching. We hope you learned something useful here today and we'll continue coming back for more information. Sign up for our monthly newsletter to find out when new training videos and content is published to our website. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram or subscribe to our YouTube channel here. And finally, we love to hear from our customers. Leave a comment below.